ever wished your home could intuitively react to changing weather patterns or automatically set the mood as day turns into night. Now it can with the Treehouse Home Automation and Security iOS application. I'm thrilled to introduce you to the latest version of Treehouse Home Automation and Security. This innovative app intelligently integrates weather data to bring your home to life. It's not just about controlling devices. It's about creating an environment that syncs seamlessly with weather conditions and the natural cycles of day and night. One of its most impressive features is the ability to schedule events based on real-time weather conditions and the sunrise and sunset. Imagine your home automatically adjusting its lighting, heating, or blinds based on whether it's sunny, raining, or getting dark. We've achieved this by integrating the Apple Weather Rest API, or WeatherKit, launched last year at WWDC. WeatherKit combines high-resolution meteorological models and advanced algorithms to provide comprehensive weather data from current conditions to long-term forecasts. However, integrating WeatherKit posed a unique challenge, particularly in setting up the JSON Web Token, a secure method to authenticate requests to the REST API. Have you ever been on a flight? You know how tickets are checked at the entrance to make sure they're valid, right? Well, JSON Web Tokens, or JWTs, are like digital tickets for online services. They're secure, digital passes that let you access certain areas or services online. JWTs are incredibly important for online security. They help prevent unauthorized access and protect sensitive data. A JWT is a small piece of coded information that a server gives to your computer when you log into a website or use an online service. When you want to access a secured part of a website or service, your computer shows this JWT to the server, like showing your ticket. The server then checks it, and if everything looks good, it lets you access the service or data you requested. Companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon widely use them. So, a JWT is a secure and efficient way for websites and online services to verify your identity and permissions without constantly asking you to log in again. They're like digital tickets that keep you safe and secure. In this video, you will see how we overcame the challenges of creating a JSON web token required to access Apple's Weather REST API. We'll dive deep into creating a JWT, securing it in Amazon Web Service Secret Manager, and managing transaction level data in Amazon DynamoDB, all comprised within a Node.js application that fetches data from WeatherKit, running on Amazon Lambda, behind an Amazon API gateway. By the end of this tutorial, You'll clearly understand how to integrate the WeatherKit REST API into any application with added insight into Amazon Web Services to facilitate the cloud-enabled usage. So whether you're a seasoned developer or just someone fascinated by API development, there's something here for everyone. Don't forget to share your thoughts, questions, or experiences in the comments below. Get ready to dive into some exciting coding and configuration as we bring the power of real-time weather data into a custom-built API. This video is structured into four informative chapters. In the first chapter, we'll delve into the essentials of the Lambda module, guiding you through the process of retrieving the necessary components and files from the Apple developer site to construct our JWT token. Chapter 2 shifts focus to Amazon's Secrets Manager. We'll provide a detailed walkthrough on how to use the SDK for securely retrieving items, an important step in managing your JSON Web Token credentials. In Chapter 3, our attention turns to DynamoDB. Here, we'll discuss its role in implementing effective rate limiting and usage tracking, key aspects of maintaining a robust API. In the concluding Chapter 4, we embark on a comprehensive review of our journey. This section is dedicated to exploring the spectrum of enhancement opportunities for our API, ensuring that its architecture and implementation are not only robust, but also poised for future growth and refinement. Here, we'll reflect on our progress, identify potential areas for advancement, and solidify the foundation we've built with a forward-looking perspective on development and innovation.
In our Node.js module for the Weather API, several essential modules are imported using require statements. Each module plays a specific role in the functionality of our application. Let's dive into what each of these modules does. Oxios. Oxios is a popular JavaScript library used for making HTTP requests. We'll use Oxios to call the Apple Weather REST API. It handles the complexities of networking, such as sending requests, handling responses, and managing errors. JSON Web Token. This library is used for creating JSON Web Tokens, JWT. And the File System Library. The FS library provides an API for interacting with a file system. We use FS to read the private key file from the file system, essential for generating the JWT. The instructions for compiling these modules outside of the Lambda environment and how to upload the resulting package to Amazon are included in the description below. The next import statement is specific to the AWS environment. The AWS SDK for JavaScript allows you to interact with AWS services programmatically. This SDK is used to communicate with AWS services within our Node.js module, such as Secrets Manager and DynamoDB. We then define a few global variables that utilize the AWS SDK. The instance of the AWS Secrets Manager will help retrieve secrets stored in AWS Secrets Manager. In our case, it's used to get the credentials required to authenticate with the Apple Weather API. The instance of DynamoDB document client will perform operations on our DynamoDB tables, such as updating user transaction records. Amazon Web Services are hosted in multiple geographic regions around the world. Each region is a separate geographic area with multiple isolated locations known as availability zones. Many Amazon Web Services are region scoped. This means the resources you create or interact with like EC2 instances, Lambda functions, and S3 buckets are contained within a specific region. Specifying the correct region is crucial because it dictates where your resources are located and managed. It also affects latency, availability, and legal considerations like data sovereignty. We've completed laying the foundation for our Weather API's functionality, ensuring smooth interactions with external APIs and AWS services. Assuming you already have an app ID and have configured it to use WeatherKit, let's log into our Apple developer account and capture the key ID, team ID, bundle ID, and private key file, all referenced by the generate JWT token function. In the certificates, IDs, and profiles section, select identifiers, select your identifier, and capture the team ID and bundle ID. To download the private key file, from the certificates, IDs, and profiles section, select keys, capture the key ID, and select download. Next, let's walk through the JWT token generation process in depth. Creating the Apple JWT ES256 header can be tricky. Let's recap what it is and why it's important. Remember, JWT stands for JSON Web Token. It's a compact, URL safe means of representing information to be transferred between two parties. ES256 is a type of cryptographic algorithm used to sign the token. This ensures the integrity of the token. The header contains metadata about the token. The first item in the header of the JWT is the subject. The subject is a standard JWT claim that identifies the principal subject of the token. The next item in the header is the private key obtained from the Apple developer account. This attribute is critical for the security of the JWT, as it ensures that only someone with access to the private key can generate a valid token. The corresponding public key is used to verify the token's signature. The third parameter in the JWT header is an object that specifies options for token generation. The issuer and key ID are set to the values obtained from the Apple developer account. The algorithm is set to ES256, which indicates that the token is signed using ECDSA, 
elliptic curve digital signature algorithm with the P256 curve and SHA256 hash algorithm. And the expires in is used to indicate the token's expiration time. Here, it's calculated as the current time, now, plus 1 hour, 3600 seconds. It means the token will be valid for 1 hour after its creation. In addition to standard JWT fields, this token includes a custom header field with an ID attribute. Custom headers in JWTs are used for various purposes, such as conveying additional metadata or information relevant to the token. Moving to the exports handler function, the main entry point for the Lambda module, the following code performs an asynchronous operation to retrieve the secret value from AWS Secrets Manager. Secrets Manager is an instance of the AWS Secrets Manager service, created using the AWS SDK. It provides methods to interact with the Secrets Manager. The getSecretValue method call on the Secrets Manager object, requests the value of the secret whose identifier, or name, is secret name. In this case, it's requesting the secret named, whether API secrets. Promise is used to handle the asynchronous operation. AWS SDK functions are based on callbacks by default. By chaining promise to the method, it modifies the function to return a promise instead, which can be used with await, for more readable asynchronous code. The Amazon Secrets Manager service helps you protect access to your applications, services, and information technology resources. The primary function of the Secrets Manager service is to securely encrypt, store, and retrieve credentials, API keys, and other secrets. By using the Secrets Manager service, you enhance the security of your WeatherKit API integration by keeping sensitive data out of your code and securely managing access to it. This approach aligns with the best practices for security and compliance. The next step in the exports handler function assigns the results of the call to generate JWT token, where the contents of the secret value are converted to a JSON object and the values required for the JWT header are retrieved and passed to the JSON web token sign method to the JWT token variable. Next, we'll retrieve and assign the query string parameters sent to our Lambda function to their corresponding variables. As a best practice when developing an API, we want to limit exposure to valid users. A valid user is assigned an API key, passed as a query parameter to our API. If the API key doesn't exist in our DynamoDB user table, the caller is denied access to this API and an HTTP 401 error is returned. Incorporating rate limiting in API development is crucial, especially when working with an API like Apple's WeatherKit. The WeatherKit API generously offers up to 500,000 API calls each month, and no extra charge for users with an Apple developer membership. For needs beyond this limit, additional API calls are available through subscription plans, the costs of which are delineated in United States dollars or the applicable local currency. Given these provisions, it's prudent to implement rate limits for your customers or applications to manage and mitigate these potential costs judiciously. By integrating rate limiting directly within our Lambda function, we'll gain the flexibility to customize this logic to align precisely with the distinct requirements of our application. This adaptability is a notable advantage over the more generic approach offered by API Gateway, where limits are uniform across all users or API endpoints. To this end, utilizing the online transaction processing capabilities of Amazon's DynamoDB can be a strategic choice, ensuring efficient handling of rate limit data and states in a scalable and reliable manner. In our API, every user's request is tracked and recorded in a DynamoDB table, specifically by logging the timestamp of their last update. This approach ensures a high level of accuracy in monitoring user activity. For every subsequent request the same user initiates, our system performs a critical evaluation of this stored timestamp to ascertain whether a full hour has elapsed since their last API call. This time-based validation is a cornerstone of our rate-limiting strategy. 
Should our system detect that the time interval between the current moment and the user's last recorded update is less than one hour, it promptly responds with an HTTP status code of 429. This code serves as a clear and standardized indicator to the user that their request frequency has exceeded the permissible limit. By adopting this method, we not only maintain an efficient and fair usage policy, but also safeguard our resources from being overwhelmed by excessive requests. The API Gateway plays a pivotal role in the architecture and management of our Weather API, serving as a crucial intermediary between clients and our backend services, such as Amazon Lambda functions or other Amazon resources. API Gateway acts as the front door for all requests to our API. It provides a single point of entry, making it easier to manage and monitor the traffic coming into our API. As we reach the conclusion of this tutorial, let's take a moment to reflect on the ground we've covered. We embarked on a detailed exploration of integrating the WeatherKit API with AWS services, navigating through the complexities of AWS Secrets Manager for secure credential management, crafting JWT tokens for authentication, and implementing sophisticated rate limiting within our Lambda functions. Alongside this, we harness the power of AWS API Gateway as our robust entry point, effectively managing incoming traffic and ensuring a seamless interaction with our backend services. Looking ahead, there's room for growth and enhancement. Integration with Amazon's CloudWatch service for real-time monitoring, implementing Lambda layers for code reusability, or even exploring Amazon's WAF for additional security layers are potential next steps. Considering the evolving nature of cloud services, staying agile and open to integrating newer Amazon Web Service offerings will be crucial in keeping our WeatherKit API robust and cutting edge. With the knowledge you've gained, you're now well equipped to take on new challenges and build upon this foundation. We look forward to seeing how you leverage these insights in your future projects. As always, we thank you for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Until the next episode of Wow! How'd you code that? Happy coding!